There is a postscript to this story that you may not know. My girlfriend and I ended up fostering a deaf pit bull puppy named Gucci. He had one eye. He snored. He absolutely destroyed our apartment. And he was the best cuddler I had ever met. Samantha and Eugene met him, fell in love, and after much trepidation, decided to adopt him. I'm happy to report that they're all doing really well. In my mind, the first two episodes of the season are inextricably tied, having filmed them simultaneously and spent so much time with both bands. In a weird way, I feel like we're all part of some club. There was one night at the Blackheart Bar where somehow both Yum and Wiretree, our final band of the season, ended up on the same bill. You can see footage of both performances in their respective episodes. What you won't see is that Courtney and Aaron from the Villette stopped by. I remember thinking about how wonderful it was that all of us now had this shared experience. I remember thinking, oh hey, this is a community, isn't it? That's pretty neat. I want to do one more, especially because like the third word I said was like, I was like, feel. Of all the achievements of the show, I think that's the one that makes me feel the happiest. There was a weird paternal swell of pride when I saw the Villettes introducing themselves to Yum. There was also this weird sense that I was watching a real life crossover episode, but maybe that's just how my brain works. I grew up in front of the TV after all. So everything is rolling, and yeah, let's just run through it. Okay. Am I rolling? All right, so let's start walking, and then play when you're ready. Okay. Go. All right, so let's, uh, let's just go for it. Okay. We're going to adjust from there. One of my favorite new ideas that we developed for season two is our long takes. I'm not going to make Alfonso Cuaron jealous anytime soon, but for me it represented a philosophy that I had in the production of the show. Good enough is not good enough. I'm not satisfied with the idea of finding a formula and never trying to change it. I'd much rather try something new and fail than stagnate in the same routine. Even though we did it as simply as we could, they were pretty much technical nightmares. I personally find it kind of funny that you can see them getting less and less ambitious as the season progresses. This wasn't laziness, but simply the result of making a TV show with basically two people. We just didn't have the time to properly plan and execute our ideas. In fact, the season finale doesn't even have one. I shot one, but the memory card got corrupted. I wasn't heartbroken, though. Working on a show teaches you to let go of your favorite ideas, and it really teaches you how to adapt. So I adapted. Ah, uh, broom. Can't believe we're using broom. <laughs> Fun little trivia. The RTB Too Long Take was filmed in our executive producer's backyard. I actually quite like it. Well, I'm Jay Trachtenberg. We're live in Studio 1A. Cliff Hargrove is our engineer. We have an audience here today. Thank you for coming, everyone. One of the underlying themes of Hardly Sound is to learn to adapt to what life gives you, not to try to force life to your design. If you really want to learn this lesson, then make a documentary. I start with 10 hours of footage or so and try to figure out how to shape it into a 30-minute story. I think the thing that helps me most is this, knowing that there is no right or wrong way to do it. I really love season one of Hardly Sound, but I really feel like the show found itself this season, and I think a lot of that had to do with us letting go of the idea that there's a right way to make a documentary series. Really all that matters is empathy. I think you can see that in the way we make this show. My interviews aren't quick sit-down 15-minute affairs, 
they often last a couple of hours and can get kind of personal. But the idea is I'm getting to know these people, not just making a check on a shot list. By getting to know everyone, it becomes easier to tell their stories. But really, what it comes down to is I just enjoy the process. When was the last time you sat down with a fellow artist and simply talked about art for two hours? It's a privilege, and it's one that I love. It's completely inefficient, but again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. As we enter this new year, I think that's what I'll try to remember. There's really no right way to do anything. I often forget this and become paralyzed with indecision. Or I think, if I can't do this thing perfectly, then I'm not going to bother. I'm going to continue to let my imperfections show. Let's see where that gets me in 2014. That was good. <laughs> that was really good. I think that was the one. Let's do it again.